What's going on everybody? This is Sean with Strangeland Oddities and I have a treat here. We got a dual interview with CJ Graham. How you doing, man? Doing good, thank you. And Tom Laughlin. Yo, 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 yo. Uh, for those of you who don't know Tom, he is the director of Friday the 13th Part 6 and CJ was Jason in Friday the 13th Part 6. Um, I recently did an interview with Ari Mihailov and he said he was in contentions for Jason and he was working out in the gym and he was saying, man, not only did this guy beat me out, but he used his initials too. And he said he's, he was at a gym doing his workout thing, yeah, 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 you know, and some guy goes, hey, CJ. He said, I stopped dead in my tracks, threw my shit down. It says, are you CJ Graham? He said, yeah. He said, I hated your guts for years. But he, he was joking around. Um, so with Ari as contention for Jason as well as CJ was, um, Ari also said that there was someone before him that did not work out for the role of Jason. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Dan Bradley. Dan, Dan Bradley. Yes, he, start, he was our stunt coordinator, and then he started doing Jason. And then Paramount just kind of didn't like the way it was going. So they said, we found a guy I think you're going to love. And I went, all right, bring him on. You know, So came down, met with, Jay, with, with CJ. I went, he's Jason. That's it. And so on we went. And one of the fan questions was, is what was your first scene that you did as Jason? Uh, I do remember it, by the way. Tom may or may not, because he's done so much work, but they had me step into the POV side profile turn. I remember Tom telling me to flex my lats and walk towards the mobile home as it was rocking, and that was my very first scene. And your first kill scene? Uh, that that that's open for negotiation because we shot everything out of sequence, so that's not a fair question. <laughs> but his first kill scene? I have no idea. I, I I just had a camera there for whatever he did. I just kind of picked it up. No, I I think I think it was actually the one with Nancy, you know, in the water. I think it was that motorhome thing. I'm sorry, the uh, Volkswagen thing. And uh, yeah, because the motorhome, we did it in two sections, you know, the exterior, and then I think we shot the other, I think we shot a different location. Now, being that you directed part six, um, why, why didn't you go on and do part seven? Well, actually, I, I was offered to do The Next Nightmare on Elm Street, and so I met on that, and I said, when do you guys start? And they said, oh, we're already shooting. I said, we mean you're already shooting. Oh, yeah, we got like three units going on. And I said, no. I'm sorry, I'm, you know, I need to be involved with all aspects of it. I can't just jump in and it's already, you know, going. So then Frank Mancuso and I talked about doing another Jason, and I said, I just want to do something different. And he said, well, what about Jason meets Freddy? And I said, can you do that? And he goes, all we can do is ask New Line. And of course, New Line said no. So I said, how about Cheech and Chong meet Jason? Because you own the rights to them. And they go, he goes, you kidding? And I go, half kidding, because Abbott and Costello met Frankenstein. I don't know, I think it would be funny to have those guys out there. And he goes, well, the comedy people are going to want to see Cheech and they're not going to like the horror. And that. I said, that's not true. You know, I think in those days it was, it seemed odd, but you know, now it's very, very commonplace to mix genres. And I was trying to mix comedy anyway with what, you know, is a normal Friday. Um, now, I noticed that you have a lot of ink on you. Um, who, who's your tattoo artist? I go to a young man named Chris, he's been doing it over 10 years, called Old Town Tattoo in Kingman, Arizona. Uh, he's very diverse and very good at what he does and uh, for the last couple, three months, about six hours every Tuesday we'd meet at his uh, studio at three o'clock and so the final project is done but I'm glad it's done, let me tell you, it hurts, I don't care anybody says, it hurts. So I envy you up on the side of your face, so that ain't, that's not gonna happen. I'm just a glutton for pain. Exactly. Uh, when I interviewed Kane, he, he punched me in the face, and I actually heard him. Who? Kane Hall. Who? Kane. I don't, never heard of him. Never heard of Kane. I don't know him either. <laughs> um, now, when you were first approached for the role of Jason, um, did you think that you could pull it off? I always felt comfortable doing the part. Um, when I was approached was actually that a company called Real Effects had done an event at a club that I ran and they just happened to have the wardrobe and put me into it for a hypnotist show and you know they say the rest is history but it really is because the the, the, 
the presence that came through uh, got some notoriety. Obviously, Tom took a look at it. Michael Nomad, the stunt coordinator, took a look at it. And uh, ultimately, Tom and Michael gave me thumbs up. And once Paramount and Frank Mancuso Jr. did, it was uh, off to the race. So I, I never felt uncomfortable doing it. Uh, I, I do talk with Kane Hodder and Tom and some of the guys that have done Jason's and they're all stuntmen, bonafide stuntmen. I'd never done a stunt in my life and very proud to say that, you know, we did a lot of one takes, which helped us, I think, now that I know a little more about the industry, put some money in the bucket so we could add some kills when we got to Los Angeles. We added some more kills. Yeah, yeah, three more came in there after the first preview. They, you know, Frank said, you know, we need three more. And I go, are you kidding? He goes, yeah. He said, I couldn't even hear that everybody was so, the crowd was so wild through the whole screening. I couldn't judge if anything worked, if the jokes worked or whatever. But Frank, who's done these so many times, he just said three more kills. So and we had the budget to do it. So it was amazing. And when we chatted on the phone, you said this is the first time that both of you guys have done an interview together. Yes. Yes, it is. First time we've done a show together. We've been waiting for somebody to call us, but Days of the Dead did it, so here we are. Nice. Yeah, when when you asked me to have Tom a part of it, I was like, oh, hell yeah. We've got to have Tom a part of it. Um, now, also, Tom, you're a musician as well. Yep, uh, five years, six years ago, yeah. Brought back our group, The Sloss, from the 1960s. Um, you want to know how old I am? We opened for The Doors, for Iron Butterfly, for Pink Floyd, all these groups. We were like 15, 16 years old. So the group broke up like in like the mid-60s or so and lost touch with everybody. And then we found out that this record uh, that we did back then, a little 45, was selling on eBay for over $6,000. So we went, wow. let's get the band back together, boys. Yeah. So we're all in our 60s, and we went, all right, 60s, going to do the 60s. We're in our 60s. Let's hit it as hard as we can. So we've, we have our, uh, an album. We've got a music video. We're doing, you know, we're doing it again. So it's been great. And you were also in uh, Alice Cooper's uh, music video as Jason. We, in fact, you know, somebody just asked me today about doing a show. I won't mention it because Alice Cooper has a show coming up, and he and I have both done a couple of shows together. You know that we've actually attended where Alice Cooper was part of the uh, uh, artist, and then I was there, which is a great photo op for the fans. So I was very fortunate just to be selected in the whole process. Um, I do see Alice Cooper occasionally. It's nice as uh, one of his managers, Bob and I exchange photographs all the time. Alice signs them, I sign them, and we kind of exchange them so that when we do meet the fan base, they get an opportunity to see what we've done together. So I'm very fortunate. You know, Alice Cooper was my first, no exaggeration, my first concert as a younger individual before I went in the military. So I thought it was so cool that, you know, what, 10 years later, I'm getting to do some events. And then, of course, Tom was blessed enough to get you know, Alice Cooper to do the music. So I think the part six is a very special piece of the series. Now, have you been offered any other roles for Jason? No, I mean, right now, I, I'm, I'm hoping that somewhere between uh, New Line and Paramount, they're looking to do one, because we haven't had one put out since 2009. Uh, but, you know, like I always tell people, if, if, if the script was put in front of me, if I could perform and I could give the product as well, if not better than part six, I'd entertain it. But if I didn't feel I could deliver Jason as he meant he should be delivered, I, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do that to what I did in part six. I wouldn't do that to Tom. And I definitely wouldn't do it to the fans that would expect me to be able to produce the same performance. So I'd have to take a hard look at my ability. But if I wrote and directed it, you'd have to be there. Okay. <laughs> so committed. You heard it, people, at Days of the Dead. If Tom does another Friday the 13th. We got Jason right here. Um, now, speaking of directing, um, do you have anything in the works as of that, that you're working on currently? I cannot talk about it. But I could have just given it away. I don't know. I don't know. I can't talk about it. Uh, could be a hidden message in this interview. That's you take that 33 and you, you play it backwards and you'll hear it. 
And I did tell Tony Todd that you did say hello. And Thank you. He's a good man. Yes, and he had nothing but good words to say about you. That's that's the great thing about this camaraderie between all the people, Michael Myers, the Jasons, Tony Todd, Candyman. You know, you look at Pinhead, everybody, you get to see this great genre of uh, great actors and stuntmen that have worked together, and they're all starting to get such high recognition uh, because of the way that was back then. I mean, we were the principals, but the principals were still a lot of the folks around us. The genre, and I learned this from Tom McLaughlin, you know, Tom and our old school, you know, we like the black and whites, Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney, the Dracula, you know, Frankenstein, Mummy. I mean, those are our era, and I really think that, you know, the four principals looking at Leatherface, looking at Michael Myers, Jason, and of course, Freddy Krueger is kind of like the foursome, four musketeers, that have carried on that uh, black and white envy from the 60s. Yeah, they're like the, the new school right. images. And I, I do appreciate it and, uh, you know, Chucky and the ones that have come out, but the, the longevity will be the key to their success. In 30 years, are we still as excited as we are I 32 years later? That's very well put. What are your thoughts on that? Pretty much agree with them 100%. I mean, we, uh, I think the thing that we provided in the 80s that we had no clue we were doing was a cool bunch of monsters, new monsters that carried on for the future generations. At the time, we thought, you know, this is just not as good as Frankenstein or Dracula, any of those. But in truth, it was because we had one advantage that nobody else had, DVD, beta, VHS, laser disc. People took these things home, they became their monsters. And now, I mean, the merchandising of Jason alone is surpassed it's anything else. It's incredible. I mean, there's nothing to that degree with Michael Myers or Freddy or anybody else. Jason somehow really hit a core, you know, and it's a simple thing to do with the mask and stuff, but to actually have that aggressive thing, like with the way CJ does it, not everybody can put that power into the, the, the part. Everybody wants to feel that, you know, and I've had people go on about the movie changed their life and I'm going, you're kidding, it's a piece of entertainment. No, no, no. I was going down, things were not happening in my life and suddenly I watched that movie and I felt like I can make it, I can do it. And I said, oh, I hope it didn't give me any bad ideas. No, 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 it was just great. It just gave me, you know, energy. So, you know, it's great. And that's the way I felt as a kid with Frankenstein. You know, I wanted to be, I related with him. I felt like an outcast and I related to that character. So it's, it's all, there's a lot of Frankenstein in Jason Lives. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing your, your own slasher type film? Not slasher. I'm, in fact, I sort of resisted doing my Friday because when I was starting to go into horror, I mainly wanted to do, you know, gothic horror. So the first thing I did was the infamous One Dark Night with corpses. And much to my shock, it came out PG-13 because there was no blood, there was no, you know, on-screen kills in that way. And there were so many people doing that. It was like you could get a deal at a network, I mean, at a studio with a knife, with a guy in some sort of mask, and some girls running around in a couple of nude scenes. That was it, and I got, no, I wanna go back to basic horror. So once I did One Dark Night, then going into Friday and said, I'm gonna bring that element in, and some humor, and the children, so that it really ups the stakes, so it's not just another slasher movie. So yes, I'm, you know, I do have a couple other things in the hopper that are, are not of the slasher genre, but are definitely in the horror genre. Nice. Now, do you have any upcoming movies that you can talk about? I'm going to take the Fifth Amendment, because I've heard that a lot lately in politics, so I'm going to align with, uh, with that. Uh, I retired about a year ago, so I reactivated my, my SAG card. Um, I was smart enough to put it in an honorable withdrawal all those years. I've had three people approach me with letters of intent for projects. Uh, even a, uh, a friend of mine who's a horror person asked me about uh, doing a project with them. So we'll see how it materializes as I go forward. Now that I have that time, that availability where I could be there, yes, we'll see how it materializes. So what made you decide to actually do retirement and then come out? Well, I spent 25 years uh, in senior executive management positions running casino resorts. And, you know, once you get to a certain point where you feel you can retire comfortably, uh, then you can apply yourself for other things in your life and just see what else you can add to your resume. But until you get to the point where you're at a stability p perspective, you've got to make sure you maintain the course. Uh, now that I can be a little uh, 
goofy or crazy or have some fun or I can just do nothing, then I can make those choices. I mean, if Tom called and I was running a casino resort, there's no way I could leave a general manager position to go do eight, 12, 10 weeks worth of work realistically because I have, you know, where I was working 2,500 employees dependent on me to make good decisions. And one of the decisions is to make sure I take care of them and their families. So I think there's some honor and integrity involved in that decision. But now that I'm in a retirement mode, you know, the future is still bright. I'm still young enough where I can enjoy it, and uh, we'll see what happens. I definitely hope that we do see you in uh, more more films coming out. And I notice you have a book over there. Yes. I actually stole the title from uh, one of my lines from the movie, A Strange Idea of Entertainment, which pretty much goes from birth all the way up to now I'm teaching, directing, and film production at Chapman University in Orange County, California. Oh, wow. And this is kind of a, you know, each chapter is another movie and or a different, you know, period of when I was doing more like thrillers or, you know, uh, true crime things through the horror, through the monsters, through the mythology, through the ghosts, Santa Claus movies in there, a fairy tale, true story. So all the, I kept shifting gears because I did not want to be in a box that that's all I did was horror. So it, you know, it, it gave me a chance to really meet some incredible people, research some amazing stories and, you know, do a lot of, I think I ended up with 42 films, you know, that came out of that period. So, and I'm not done. I hope not no. because your work is amazing. Thank you. And uh, I hope you bring your band back as well, too. I would love that, yeah. Yeah, we do. Actually, we do a man behind the mask. And uh, I knew Alice when he was Vincent. And we were, he had a group called the Naz, and we played together in, in California. So when Alice took off, I went, holy shit. I mean, <laughs> I was amazed. And it took quite a while before I finally actually saw his act, because um, I only saw pictures and clips and stuff. But we worked very similar. I, in the 60s, I was very theatrical, as was he. You know? So it, it's sort of like we're kindred spirits on that. Give the audience a show. Yeah, I, I do um, live photography for a bunch of artists. And I did Alice Cooper's Hollywood Vampires. Oh, wow. And that was a pretty pretty uh, different type of lineup. I mean, you had Johnny Depp on guitar, yeah. which was... I mean, I know Johnny Depp's been in bands, but you wouldn't expect to see him with Alice Cooper. Yeah. So I, I thought that was that was really really cool about that. Yeah, the um, vampires are great. Yeah. Um, well, we're gonna cut this interview a little bit short because uh, it's Days of the Dead, Charlotte, North Carolina, and these guys have a lot of work to do. They have a lot of fans to see, which that's the important part here. The fans. Any last words? No, I just want to thank the fans for uh, the loyalty over the years and the continued loyalty as we go forward with the next generation. So thank you. Same thing, you know, without you guys, I mean, it mean nothing. And the fact that 30-something years later, we're still talking about this movie is amazing. And just know, whatever it is you're into, I don't care what it is, don't give up your dreams. Because the rock and roll thing took me 50 years, 50 effing years <laughs> to get that album made. But it's just as sweet now as it would have been back in the 60s. So, you know, hang in there, guys. Whatever it is you want to do, do it. Well, gentlemen, I definitely thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule here to speak with us. Again, this is Sean with Strangeland Oddities. Days of the Dead, we are out.